to determine the charge on capacitor 1 and capacitor 2, what we have to do is simplify this circuit until we have just a single capacitor. We can begin to do that by noting that these two capacitors right here are in series. And we know that when capacitors are in series, in order to get the equivalent capacitance, we follow this equation here. So basically what that says is 1 over the equivalent capacitance is equal to the sum of the reciprocal capacitances. So since each of these capacitors has a capacitance of 10 microfarads, we would have 1 over 10 microfarads plus 1 over 10 microfarads. On the right hand side we add them together we would have 2 over 10 microfarads. And then if we reciprocate both sides we would have the equivalent capacitance is equal to 10 microfarads divided by 2 which of course simplifies to 5 microfarads. Now once you combine two capacitors into a single equivalent capacitor, you're going to want to redraw the circuit. And when we redraw the circuit, we'll combine those two into a single capacitor. So here's what it would look like. So again, notice we've combined it into a single equivalent capacitor whose capacitance is 5 microfarads. We would next note that these two capacitors are in parallel with one another. And according to the equations listed above, when capacitors are in parallel, we can find the equivalent capacitance by simply adding together the capacitance values, is what this equation right here is saying. So we will combine these parallel capacitors by simply summing them. Remember that this one right over here is 10 microfarads. So the equivalent capacitance when we add them together will just be 15. We'll go ahead and redraw the circuit. We will next note that th these two capacitors right here are in series with one another. We've already stated how to combine series capacitors. We use the 1 over the equivalent capacitance is equal to 1 over the 15 microfarads plus 1 over, this one again is 10 microfarads. For this case, you might want to pick up a calculator and add 1 15th to 1 10th. And when you do that, you'll get 1 sixth. So we have 1 over the equivalent capacitance is equal to 1 over 6 microfarads. Again, you can reciprocate both sides. And by that, I just mean you flip this side upside down to make CEQ over 1. And then flip this side upside down to get 6 over 1, or just 6 microfarads. So we combine those two, and the equivalent capacitance is 6 microfarads. We'll redraw the circuit again. Finally, we note that these last two capacitors right here are in parallel with one another. So when we combine them, we would simply add their capacitance values. This one right here is 10 microfarads. So adding them together will create an equivalent capacitance of 16 microfarads. So we redraw the circuit one final time, and we have a single equivalent capacitor of capacitance 16 microfarads. Now, the potential supplied by the battery is given in the question as 10 volts. So we're going to mark that down here. Now once you simplify the circuit down to a single equivalent capacitor, what you're going to want to do is calculate the charge. And from the equations listed above, we know that charge equals capacitance times potential difference. So we simply take our equivalent capacitance of 16 microfarads, multiply this by 10 volts, and we will get a total charge in our circuit of 160. Now the unit here will be microcoulombs since we're using microfarads. So now that you have the charge on this capacitor, you can write it down, 160 microcoulombs. And to continue answering the question, which is getting the charge on capacitor 1 and capacitor 2, you're going to need to work your way backwards through the circuit. When you do so, follow the following rules. So we've listed the rules right here. When you bring, when you, excuse me, when you move backwards through a circuit, and I'll show you how to do that, you will bring potential with you when you go back to a parallel arrangement. And then if you are working your way backwards and you are going to a series arrangement, you will bring the charge with you. So for example, if we 
start with our single equivalent capacitor and work our way backwards to this picture, we would be working our way backwards to two parallel capacitors. And according to our rules, if we're moving back to a parallel arrangement, we're going to bring with us the potential. So the potential across this capacitor was 10 volts supplied by the battery. So that means we'll have 10 volts on this capacitor and 10 volts on this capacitor. And before continuing working your way backwards, you're going to want to calculate any missing or unknown quantities. Now recall that here we have the capacitance as 10 microfarads, but we don't have the charge here. So we're going to go back and use the charge equals capacitance times potential in order to calculate the charge. So we basically just multiply the capacitance by the potential to get the charge. So 10 times 10, of course, is 100. That would create a charge of 100 microcoulombs, and indeed this is the correct answer for the amount of charge on C1. So that is the correct answer to part A. We'll continue working our way backwards. Let's multiply this capacitance value by this potential in order to get the charge. So 6 times 10 is 60, so we have a charge of 60 microcoulombs. Might be a good idea to label the different values. So this is a Q, this is a C, and this is a V. We'll continue working our way up through the circuit. This time, we're going to be working from a capacitor backwards to a series arrangement. And the rules listed below tell us to bring with us the charge value. So in this case, we're bringing charge. That's 60 microcoulombs. So that means that this capacitor has a charge of 60 microcoulombs. And so does this one have a charge of 60 microcoulombs. This over here was a capacitance. The capacitance value of this was that 10 microfarads. We have unknown quantities here. We have the potential unknown. And we can recall from this equation that the potential, if we rearrange the equation, would be charge over capacitance. So we're going to take the charge values and divide by the capacitance. So we'll take 60 microcoulombs and divide by 15 microfarads to give us 4 volts. So that would be the potential on this capacitor. And then here we have 60 microcoulombs divided by 10 microfarads. We would get 6 volts for that potential difference. Keep on working your way backwards through the circuit. We're almost there. We're going to work one more time backwards, or maybe two actually. We'll take this capacitor, we'll move backwards to this parallel arrangement. The rules below state that if you move backwards to parallel, bring the potential with you. So bring the four volts with you. This will be four volts, and this will also be four volts. So that equals V. This is equal to C. They tend to get a little cluttered, these diagrams. We need to calculate the charge. Remember, charge was capacitance times potential. So we'll multiply 10 by 4. That gives us 40 microcoulombs. And then multiply 4 by 5, and you get 20 microcoulombs. Finally, moving one more time back up, we're going to move from this capacitor back to the two from which it came. This is a series arrangement. You bring with you the charge, so you bring that 20 microcoulombs backwards with you. That means that this capacitor, as well as that one, each have a charge of 20 microcoulombs. And that is indeed the answer to part B of the question. That is, capacitor 2 has a charge of 20 microcoulombs.